So LTT recently released their new mini screwdriver and we reached out to them to sponsor us, but they said no. So we decided, oh, it's okay. We'll help out their little channel and send some views over to them. But let's go ahead and talk about how we would have made the LTT mini screwdriver case if you were doing it with mass production 3D printing. Now, the case for the current LTT screwdriver is pretty generic. It's injection molded, it's got magnets on the outer side. It looks nice, it's very pretty. You've got the black and the orange coming together. It's nice. We couldn't get a hold of one because they're back ordered right now, but good for you guys. Keep on selling stuff like that. That's fantastic to see that kind of thing. But we're gonna redesign it for mass production printing because what Linus and their team had to do is go through a whole process of getting a bunch of molds made and iterating through a whole bunch of versions of the product when they could have just prototyped on their machine and then immediately put it into production. And since the case and the screwdriver are sold separately, they could even do something like print on demand. So let's just run through it real fast here. First of all, looking at their case, they do have magnets on the outer side. That feels great when it's snapping closed and that kind of thing, and it's fantastic. But then they also have to deal with a bunch of really high precision holes in order to hold all of the bits. They don't have to be super high precision, but you certainly can't have them too small, otherwise a bit then gets stuck inside of there and it all starts feeling weird. So the experience can get thrown off very, very easily if that orange liner that holds all the bits is out of whack. Then on the other side, they made the lid of it actually functional to where you can drop screws into these individual sections so that you can sort out whatever it is that you're disassembling and keep the screws categorized, which is really useful when you're doing a disassembly of a PC. Now, that's all fine, but I think there's a way to really radically improve this if you were using printing. So let's go ahead and look at a couple of versions of boxes that we made. Now, most people look at 3D printing and they're like, oh, that's garbage. You're gonna have layer lines and all kinds of other issues. Injection molding's so clean and pretty. Well, injection molding kind of sucks in this situation. LTT had to go through probably multiple molds in order to verify this design, a decent amount of product development, keeping tolerances correct and that kind of thing, as well as having to deal with just the complexity of all that setup process to where they can't really prototype at home and they have to do a whole prototype as in a full production run. They also have to deal with the challenges of inventory. They have to produce thousands of these, get them stored up and then hope they sell, which is a really high capital expense for LTT. LTT when they don't know if the product will be successful right off the bat. So molding creates a lot of risk, and while it creates what many people think is a premium product, there's a way to get around it. Now, of course, let's just go ahead and start with the design of the box itself. It's not that difficult to do. Many people can design a box, but what you can do here is actually create something very unique. The first thing you wanna do is design the box to be laid out flat like this. What this lets you do is take advantage of the textured bed of a 3D printer. Now, it's not very good for mass production, so if you're really full sending this, you would figure out a way to print it kind of at an angle like this on the print bed or flat like this. We wanted to really emphasize the outer texture of it, and given the cost of the item at 29, 30 bucks, that is reasonable and there's a way of getting there with it even printed flat like this. That is a cost-effective feasibility. Inside, you then have all of the bit locations and that kind of thing. We're gonna talk about this a little bit more later in the video of how to radically improve this from what you would normally do with 3D printing or with molding. But you go ahead and lay out all those bit slots. That's fine, that's not that difficult. You can even put labels in there that would be 3D printed. If you have labels on that, you definitely wanna print it horizontally like this so that those labels are nice, crisp, and clear. But then, you of course have the hinge. Our hinge is actually much more durable and the overall box is much more durable because rather than having thin walled injection molded pieces that are multiple assemblies and have some hollowness to them whenever you tap them, you get a 3D printed part that feels much more stable, much more durable, much more rigid. And you can actually print the hinge in place so rather than having a top half and a bottom half that then have to be assembled with a dowel, you can reduce cost by just printing the whole thing as one single mechanism right there. And if you want to really get into it, you can tune the actual hinge itself so it has a particular sound. We did not do this, so it's just plastic on plastic. It sounds a little bit cheap, but there's ways of getting around that. If you really want to, you can go back to a metal dowel that's just reinforced, but again, the whole thing can be printed in place as one shot. But now let's go ahead and get onto the lid, because our lid is not like the LTT lid. We went ahead and did a little bit more with this. What I hate whenever I put screws into a little bin is that they start sliding around. You try to grab them and they move from one side to the other and so on and so forth. And admittedly, this is a bit of a nitpick, but 
Linus nitpicks everything. So back at you. Instead of making them a rounded or a flat base bottom slot down in here, we actually made them angled and kind of pyramidal so that the screws settle into little grooves inside of each one of the trays. So they kind of self sort themselves into rows. That way it's very easy to grab the next one and grab the next one because they fall into this channel where they basically line up. And if you're piling in a bunch, fine, then that goes by the wayside. But it's a nice little touch on top that just improves the experience that much more and adds no extra cost. So creating that type of geometry in here lets you create an experience that you otherwise wouldn't have. This can be difficult to do with molding because since molding requires thin walls on most parts in order to avoid shrinkage, you can't really thicken a certain area by making it pyramidal. So for example, right here in this channel, on the opposite side right here, you have a point of thickness that's an eighth to maybe even a quarter of an inch thick, depending on how thick we make this lid and how deep we want these channels to be. That can create shrinkage that would normally make the part look really inferior if you were using molding. So you can't really generally create those sort of thick features that way. But you can with printing because it doesn't care how thick anything is. This whole thing is chunky. Now, we also did not do the interior liner, which I admit is kind of a downfall. We could separate that out and create an orange version of the interior liner, but we just wanted to avoid it for now in order to aggregate parts so that it's cost effective but still maintaining the premium feel. Now, with this smooth part, you have just general layer lines out there, and then you have the textured bed on either side. The big thing to note is the way we designed the hinge on the outer edges of here. We have a chamfer along the bottom edge, the top edge, and along the hinge itself. A chamfer is way better than a fillet because you create really crisp edges, you make sure it adheres to the bed well, and you don't have any sort of potentiality for defects forming inside of all of this. So the geometry of it is very important and also lets you create an aesthetic that's really interesting. Again, these really thick hinges can be used to create aesthetics that differentiate you from other competitors who are also making just an injection molded box. But you have to make sure that you're aware of what you're doing. Now this hinge is stupidly durable because not only did we make it chunkier just to really bring home the point, but the interior of it is all inside the plane of the print itself. So there's no way this hinge is gonna break any more than any other plastic hinge would break. I would love to get a hold of the LTT case and then we can put it into our tensile tester and really break it to the max. But the hinge isn't going to go anywhere. Now the textures on the outside itself. Obviously you can embed an actual logo onto this. Generally you do not want text against the print bed and this is a logo by logo case. Our logo is very nicely made for first layer kind of printing because it doesn't have like little cursive moments or a lot of little E's and I's inside of there. Everything is a continuous sort of tool motion. So you can't always get away with this. But the LTT logo would actually work right here. Now, again, we get to the point where, oh, it looks 3D printed from the side. This all looks nice. This looks like a nice peeing surface, but the side looks weird. Well, now this is when you get into using things like actual texturing. You can design in the texturing like a knurling or something else, or you can just apply a little bit of noise to the outside to where the outside of it looks peened as well. And it actually reduces the cost of the part because now defects effectively don't turn up as often. So you can create a box that's really beautiful and you can't even tell tell it was 3D printed. Now, magnets could be inserted into this. You could add that onto the manufacturing process on the end to where it has some slots for magnets and then you can push it together. That's fine and doable. It just adds cost to the product. We decided to go ahead and go with mechanical latches. So these mechanical latches are just simple tabs that you throw a dowel through and then they latch onto there. There is a way to do this with compliant mechanisms, but compliant mechanisms can wear out over time. So the tabs themselves aren't necessarily that important. What we were focusing on was the box itself. Now, let's go to where 3D printing can really extend this. Right now we've been talking about how 3D printing could build something basically equivalent to the current LTT box. Something pretty good, but not necessarily wildly different or better. But let's go ahead and take a look at those screw bit slots again. The problem with those holes is that you're dealing with the fit of the screws, and the fit can vary a little bit, you're dealing with very high tolerances, and if one of them goes out of whack, somebody had a bad experience with the product. What if you could have those holes effectively change size to whatever bit was going inside of there? This is where 3D printing creates something really interesting. What we did is we went ahead and redesigned this with basically a single leaf spring across each row. What this does is this applies tension to each one of the holes so that as a bit is placed in there, that spring tensions just a little bit so that the bit is held in by that single leaf. 
something that couldn't actually really be manufactured in a single plastic part, but would actually have to be assembled and would probably look weird and have like a silver spring and your nice orange thing. This can all be done as one shot effectively. This is where you can create a box that's really above and beyond what anybody else has, because you're able to put in geometries that were never manufacturable before, unless you're using mass production 3D printing. And this is something you can use in all types of other places. If you're holding or retaining chips or boards or whatever else it happens to be. In this case, you get to do it by holding in bits. So overall, I think we took LTT's box and improved upon it so that anybody who's getting a mini screwdriver now actually has a box that has more capabilities and is easier to get a hold of because right now it's kind of tough to order those things and get them shipped in time. But other than that, congratulations to LTT on the launch of the mini screwdriver. It's great to see what it is. And yeah, if you're ever looking for another box, we've got a pretty decent sized print farm here that's producing a lot of these types of parts. So give us a call. Have a great day, everybody.